Welcome back in, everybody. Golf Talk Radio with Mike and Billy, brought to you by McGowie Health Group of Atascadero. Check out HealthySlowCounty.com. You're looking to uh, up your nutrition, get yourself fit, get yourself back into shape, back in the life that you want. McGowie Health Group at 805-461-8822. Dr. Ryan McGowie, been on the show many times. HealthySlowCounty.com, and uh, he's been kind enough that we've given away golf balls, Bridgestone golf balls every week. Uh, purchased and paid for by McGowie Health Group. So check them out. So joining us right now, and we're going to profile this young man, is a, is a what I consider a good friend of mine. I'm getting to know him more now um, in the in the industry, but I've known him for many years. Is teaching professional Rory Dahl. And Rory, you ready? We're just going to profile you. The listeners get to know you a little bit better. But if I got it right, you're an instructor out the, at the Monarch Dunes um, Golf Resort, and uh, you've been a tour player for a while, played in many tours and events, right? Correct. I... Uh, well, we'll get to the questions of where I grew right. up and stuff, I'm sure. But It's yep. coming. Yep. So, yeah, so here we go. You're on the you track. start, Mike? You want me to go? Uh, lead it off there. Get All it. right. Where did you grow up, Rory? I grew up about 50 yards to the right of Hole 6 at uh, the canyons at Black Lake. <laughs> so, <laughs> Napomo, California. You actually probably have a Titleist three in my yard. Not in your yard. In my yard, yeah. I remember where you lived. Yeah. I've been to your house over there when you were little. Yep. I would walk over and find all the golf balls yeah. the guys hit in the trees, and I'd sell it back to them <laughs> until Blacklick was like, hey, you know, mean, you're kind of cutting into our golf ball I business. Re- I, I remember you I over said, there. my prices are good. What can I do? <laughs> you know? That's right. I remember you being over there. Uh, over to your house. Then. Yep. That's too good. So born local. <laughs> can I get my Titleist 3 back? I might have sold it. All right. We'll talk later. I mean, professional golf ball goes for a good price nowadays. <laughs> yeah, really. So as a kid, what kind of uh, sports did you play? I mean, obviously you played golf. Yeah. I started golf kind of late compared to the the Owens of the world. Um, I started when I was 11 or 12. I think I started the first mm-hmm. time I was 12 or 13, mm-hmm. right in there. It was like 2000, the first tee started Blackley, 2003, 4, 5. But he excelled in another sport, really <laughs> excelled in another sport, but I'll let you tell. So he did play other sports. Yeah, I, played- I knew him from the other sport first. I played base. I played baseball. I tried soccer when I was little, but didn't really connect with that that much. wasn't my wasn't my thing. I didn't like all the running. Uh, baseball was my. I loved baseball growing up. That was. I, I remember you and he Jeff. was really good. You yeah. and Jeff, Jeff McNeil yeah. were like hooked at the hip. Yeah, Jeff baseball. and I did everything together. We played baseball, golf. We were on the same teams. We did it yeah. all together. Mm-hmm. So he, we both loved golf, and and baseball was probably. Well, obviously for him now where he's at, obviously it's his first love. But yeah. for me, baseball was probably the, the sport I loved the most. I was just saw more opportunities in the game of golf. So yeah. that that's kind of what led me. I tried basketball in high school. That was short lived. Well, yeah, you know, I wouldn't watch you pitch. Small. And you were you were a big kid, I think, for Little League. I don't know if it's if it's called Little League or not. But yeah, you were, Little League, Bay Bruce. But I watched stuff. you I watched you pitch one day. And and I remember you came out. I think <laughs> you came out to two different games. Yeah. You came out when I was like fourteen, two right. to okay. one. Yeah, I remember, fourteen yeah. or fifteen. We had some all star games. So, okay, stuff so like it was that. after I knew you from golf. You were still pitching. I was yeah, still, you're incredible. I was still pitching because there was about uh, from twelve to sixteen. I still played baseball and I was playing golf. Wow. And then mm-hmm. once sixteen rolled around, that's when the time came. It was sophomore year of high school. Babe Ruth ended, and that's when Jeff and I we were on a team. We we were. We lost in the state championship, and that was the last baseball game I played. And then I decided, cause after 16, you're done. You got to go to high, you know, play for your high school. You're and right. So that was. Do you, you know, think? Do you think anything was good is going to happen to Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. talking about Jeff yeah. McNeil, who right. plays for the New York Mets. He's he's, on, local, he's on so enough talk huge. shows. He's just awesome. So yeah. I have him in my fantasy leagues. He's Rose. a good pick. We're coming back to him. No, well, nobody, and it's so funny because all these guys, all these guys pick? I'm with are all over the United States, and they yeah. have no idea who How he is. He, yeah. Oh yeah. He, and anybody like, that got him, ace. he was probably the best sleeper in the whole oh, thing. Oh my gosh, he's a mate. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy's just a hitting machine. But so how, so tall, been, how, how tall? How tall are you? Right. I'm good. Thank Thanks. You. I'm six five. Six, yeah, because you know, obviously, people can't see you because we're on radio. But I mean, I can only imagine. I remember when you were younger in your teens. I mean, you were pretty tall then. Yeah, I was. So being a pitcher, that's it was great. Yeah, from 12 to 13, I mean, at 12, I could play all the positions on the baseball field. I played shortstop. I wow. did everything. But at 13, I grew a lot, and all of a sudden, it was like, okay, running's hard now. <laughs> yeah, was like, exactly. I was a lot wait, slower to first base. So I was... Wait till you're 60, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? So, Pitch buyers? Oh, yeah. okay. So I, uh, Sorry. Awesome. I went through Mon- and, and became more of a pitcher in, in yeah. first base and stuff, and that was my main awesome. role. And then I tried basketball, didn't have the footwork for it. And then at 16, it was... 
um, we were lucky to have, I had, I had Billy was my first coach and everything and, and got me involved in the first tee and, and helped me get my love for the game. And then my high school coach, Paul Springer, I'm sure you, yeah. I think you remember because you were at Black Lake yeah. still. And I he heard that name forever. Yeah. And he was just an awesome guy and like a grandfather to me. It helped, yeah. uh, he helped get me involved and, and he was a big decision or a big part of my decision to play golf instead of baseball. Yeah, and, you know, nice. and then at that point I was then to baseball and it was all things golf from there. So, you know what, um, Rory, he probably might remember this or not. My first chapter win as a, as a pro in this chapter was at the very for links when it first opened and Rory and I, and, Two other kids, it was Doug Marin and maybe Jeff, Mc, was it Jeff that played with us? It, it was, was Jeff or Cameron. Some, it was one of oh, the buddies, three of yeah. us went up and we won the Pro Junior event and I was oh. the low pro. Oh, I remember that. That was fun. The, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. the links. Yeah, and I had the course record there at the time and, and I always will because they took those back back right. tees. They're remember gone. they were like 260-yard par threes. Yep. I was hitting drivers into those things. Remember that? But we won the tournament yeah, together. I remember so that. We brought him up and played, and he was 12 or 13 years old. We won the tournament together. That's so cool. Oh, it was so fun. So uh, the next question you already answered. So, Mike, I'm going to four. Yeah. Um, did your parents or siblings play golf? Uh, not really. Have? My dad, he he was a developer, and, in, and he's in insurance and whatnot. So he had a lot of golf trips, you know, and insurance. Golf, golf's a big thing. Um, but he never really played, uh, never really got – not into the game. He sure so, supported you, though. I remember oh, they were, he was always around where you were, and that was the neatest thing ever to see. Uh, I was, great parents. I, mean, I, was, yeah, I was so lucky. I, Same I've thing had happened great, with the Averett family, too. Got great parents. Yeah. Support. Exactly. It's uh, It was great. I mean, every every time I was at a tournament, they were always out watching. I loved having their support. Even in college, they made it out to a, to a lot of tournaments and stuff. That's and, pretty cool. And that was... And they, they started... You know, my dad will go out, and he's... Um, I always say, if they ask you your instructors, don't tell them me. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not taking responsibility for your yeah, golf game. That's pretty There's funny. There's a parent-child privilege there. But he, uh, he'll well, go out. I think he'd be to proud to say he was your instructor. Yeah. <laughs> so he, uh, he'll he go out and play a little bit and stuff. And he'll do it you know, for oh, me. Oh, he and, said if people, if people ask him, don't no, no. say you're his no, instructor. I told him. I oh, said if people t- ask you who your instructor is, no, don't I tell him me. No, that's hilarious. <laughs> but no, oh, he's uh, is... he plays a little bit. My brother played in high school, and he was a pretty good player. Um, he's a little older than I am. He played out at Tascadero and stuff. Um, and he he was a good player, but he didn't really pursue it after high school. Um, so I was, you know, I'm the main golfer in the family. So Awesome. So... The first time you broke 90, do you remember it? Do you remember how old you were, where it was? Were you like four, Owen? <laughs> <laughs> Owen, have you ever shot over 90? <laughs> no. Yeah. You never <laughs> asked. You probably never say. have shot That's higher exactly than 90. That's right. That's I, funny. That could be true. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I don't know. Ex- I don't remember that exactly. I, I know so that it, number it, wasn't a milestone. That wasn't a milestone. Breaking 80 was a milestone. When was that? I know, and it had to be... I picked up golf really quickly, and I I think it I don't remember the exact date. I know it was at Black Lake. What age? I played probably thirteen. Thirteen. I'm I'm like how are you? Yeah, had to be thirteen. What was your well eleven? I used to seventy three. Yeah. So I I honestly because you were who remembers when they're you know they're five. Yeah. Probably four and a half. Exactly. For seventy nine. I skinned my knee off my trike when I was five. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> try to jump. I try to make a jump. <laughs> you still got that scar, don't you? Heck yeah, oh, I do. Reading putts. I try to make a little jump of the board <laughs> and a little brick. <laughs> Crash. Oh man. Crying. Don't tell I was me five, that. Man. Don't tell me that you let me, let me guess. Too. You took you took a cinder block. I, it was, it and was you took brick. some plywood, and the plywood was yeah. like two and a quarter. Hit the wheel. So it had the ledge. That's exactly. You got it. You got to deal with the ledge. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> and I was too too young for the big wheel, so this was one of them old metal broken tricycles that was flying down a hill. Oh hell. man! Anyways, that's all I remember. <laughs> like you seventy you split in half. So um, uh, high school golf, college golf. You just spent, did you did you did you play any high school golf? Did you play for your team? Yeah, I played for Napomo. So that I was uh, my freshman years through senior year. I played all four years. Played for for Paul Springer, and we had a, a really good team. Um, we won a one or two league championships. I don't remember. How many exactly? Um, and then senior year, we didn't have a lot of younger players. And then Jeff, 
ditched me to go play baseball. Dang. Which, yeah. yeah. Dumb uh, Jeff. Which turned Bad out, decision he made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turned out okay for him. He's doing all right. <laughs> Do, and, uh, do you know, Mike, he wants to work, be, part, be a range picker yeah. so he can get free rounds? I of heard. Go- yeah, he's still a cart kid. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> he, uh, that's yeah, so cool. he's, he's, that's, that's pretty cool, actually. That's actually really cool. He's so great. He, yeah. um, so we played all, yeah, I played all four years. And then um, after finishing up with high school, which Owen broke any record I would have ever had this year in everybody's yeah. records. But uh, I went on to play in college. And played out at a school in Nebraska and played four years out there and uh, enjoyed that a lot. Are the Corn Huskers? What's Nebraska? No, it was, Nebraska, it was, a, it was another school. <laughs> what are they? Uh, yeah, they're the Corn the Huskers. Celiacs? Yeah. What, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Celiacians. Sorry. sorry, yeah, the Celiacians. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, mean, no, I, I just right. learned what that was. It's so. all good. It's <laughs> No, it was a school in Lincoln, Nebraska Wesleyan University. <laughs> the Lincoln Celiacians. <laughs> That's like, funny. The they have the is, stomach like Roswell for or something. The, the stomach is, for is sports. The, is the logo a stomach? Yeah, the stomach for yeah. sports. <laughs> it's a, it's in the gut, team. Yeah. <laughs> we got the gut. We got the gut. We got Sorry. The gut. So you play college golf and then you hike high school golf. Go ahead, Mike. Number eight. Yeah, so um, you you play college. When you start playing college golf, you're thinking this is maybe what I want to do for a profession. Yeah, I had that. Or was it after? I had that idea because I wanted to play professional baseball for a while till I flipped to golf, yeah. and and then it became golf. And I mean, my whole life it's been golf, golf, golf. And so, even in high school, I had the idea that I was gonna. My goal was to pursue golf past college. I always had that oh, wow. long view. So I mean, it was, yeah. you know, the reason I chose to go to a lower level school was because I started golf so late, starting at twelve. I didn't have that big tournament experience. I couldn't, you know, I'd, if I went to a D1 school, I would be not really playing right. tournaments for a couple smart. of years. Smart. So, wow. That is smart. I said, okay, let's, you know, let's go to a little smaller school. I can start right away. This school had won a national championship a few years past. Um, I had a, an amazing coach. And they, they gutted it out? They gutted it out. <laughs> they got it done. <laughs> and Jeez, sorry. Just, uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that kind of tickled my tummy there. So they... <laughs> <laughs> so, so all right. they, they, it was a good it was a great fit and i had a really good coach it was a place i could get better i was originally kind of thinking go there two years and transfer and then i was enjoying it so much and and playing well there that you know i was i was getting everything accomplished that i needed to so i ended up staying and then my senior year i didn't have my, my coach resigned um and, and had to go on to do some other things and so we had a, a new coach who's actually an old player so I kind of became a player coach my senior year. So I was wow. So I was a senior, but there was no other seniors on the team. It was all younger guys. So, so I you kind were of, the mentor. You were yeah. Yes, yeah, so I kind of took yeah. you know, uh, I wasn't. I was still just a student, but I did a lot of the stuff for the team and helped the new coach and stuff. And it was great. We had a good relationship, and we just didn't have the depth. So that year was kind of a bummer because I ended up qualifying to go to the national championship just by myself so i didn't get to go with my team the other three years mm. the whole team went That's awesome. uh, my senior year you know it was it was you know bittersweet because i enjoy i was happy to be selected to go individually but you didn't have the but team i didn't have my team with me so it was you know it's definitely a different experience when you're in college you're so yeah. used to your team and your guys with you and it's it's all it's fun and then it's a gut all shot. of a sudden it's just yeah it is it was a big gut shot <laughs> it really is <laughs> I didn't, have the, I didn't have the stomach for it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's all right. <laughs> so, so turning pro, a lot of people yeah. think it's easy, and especially you know when you're talented, and, and and there's a lot of young, great college players, and and there's a couple ways to do it pro. You, the way I, I kind of did both. I did. I played for a while, then I went through the PGA process. Yeah. Um. But you went right into playing, man. And what was it like? I mean, is it, it, it without getting too in depth with it? Is it as easy as people think? Oh, absolutely not. There's nothing <laughs> easy. It's not even the conversation. <laughs> so you don't, I just, mean, you don't just walk on the first tee, tee it up, and, and you, you know, you've got a huge gallery behind you. And it's oh, yeah, you just sign an autograph, <laughs> throwing balls out in the crowd. There you go. Dude, I'd get yeah. you an autograph. Well, we're done. All right? So, yeah, I signed so, one or two. It felt good. It was like, oh, this that, is, that cool. is cool. I mean, I was like, for them, I was like, you realize I'm, it's not that important. Like, I'm just no, <laughs> any, anybody. Cool. But, you know, it was a couple kids in Canada or something. But, yeah. you know, it's... That's awesome. It, it was... It's hard. Everyone's everyone's really, really good. Everyone's really, really talented. Everyone works really hard. Uh, not everyone has money for it. So that's a huge so determining factor. It is a level of, obviously, there's a lot of great talent, but if you don't have the backers or the money, 
that some of that talent never gets to be shine or shine, no, right? I mean, it's just never gets because it needs expensive, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, <laughs> well, I know that it is. I'm asking you, it's expensive. Yeah, huh? yeah, no, it's it's if you leave town, especially in mini tours, if you leave town and have to get a hotel and play in a tournament, it's over a thousand dollars. And wow. so you have to almost finish top twenty or just to break even, right, or something like that. Top, top ten to break yeah, even. Top ten. There's usually like forty guys in a tournament. If it's a big mini tour, like a Golden State tour, they're doing a great job now. They're getting some 60, 70 player fields. You know, maybe top fifteen, you get your money back. Wow. Um, but I mean, if you break even on the mini tours, you're doing great. And there's something you to are be said you are like, doing great. You're right. Yeah. And but and there's and also you get noticed and you get the experience for the next yeah. step up. So Next when you step, be a good name of a so when you were on when you were there <laughs> yeah when you were there uh, playing um, you set up in Canada well I did um, I played in many tours around California okay. and then Canada's got PJ Tour Canada exactly so I was yeah. up at a few of those and then there's PJ Tour Latin America and you're really just trying to it's a balance of how many tournaments do I play in that advance my career because all those Monday qualifiers all those Q schools even if you do pretty good you don't make anything you just get status which status is good but right. if you go and let's say is a Monday qualifier and you spend seven hundred dollars eight hundred dollars in expenses entry fees and you finish fourth and the top three get in great you had a great tournament <laughs> you just lost eight hundred dollars right but you got a lot of experience a lot of people did you have that. backers did you do the whole thing where you had you people have investing well, in you to do that yeah i mean i had i had buying shares i guess did yeah. you sell shares i did the shares thing um and i did you know i got a, a decent amount i had raised about probably over the course of the three years twenty thirty thousand which yeah. seems like a lot but i mean ten thousand a year and then i supported myself so i wow. you know i started when i started instructing out at monarch i was a teacher and i just put put myself through it all and kind of reinvested everything. And then um, about a year and a half, two years ago, I started building my own academy and stuff and getting my own people helping out and, and getting some instructors and everything. We're, and, we're getting there, man. You're yeah, skip, get, skipping ahead. Skipping yeah. ahead, yeah. So, so <laughs> at some point, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to balance, you know, where, you know, is it from a professional player, and like all my younger guys now that I talk to, it's like, okay, preparing them in college it's all about you know, You want to get experience you want to play in events but it's also about who you know mm. you know so go out to those country clubs get to know those guys if you are one of those guys and you're listening get to know one of those kids because they need your help but yeah. you know it's there's a you hate to see it's also the it's almost kind of funny because if you're good enough to not to support you know you don't need the money yeah. Right? right so you need it first right. to get to where you need to get and when you get to get there you don't need the money so it's 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 it, it's it's really interesting, but yeah. people they do need back. People need to help these young players, so it's neat that you had that. But we're gonna we're gonna stop, take a break here in a second. I'm gonna come back and finish your, some of these questions, but Perfect. because I think it, you know, and I'll ask you how you feel about it. But you know, you left the the playing world to become what I believe is a renowned instructor, and and, and that's it. It it, it kind of circles what I did. <laughs> yeah. I did. I went and played for a while, and I decided those that do do. But my passion was teaching. So we'll go from the playing career to, to your teaching career. So, so take us out, Mike. We'll come back. All we'll right. finish this interview with or profile with Roy Dahl, teaching professional. All right, Golf Talk Radio brought to you by Sundale Country Club, home of the Bakersfield City Championship for over thirty years. Give them a shout for tee times at six six one eight three one five two two four. That's six six one eight three one five two two four. SundaleCountryClub.com. We'll be right back. Stay with us. No. 